Now, auto writing is simply writing under the influence of an external force. In other words, uh, she wrote as she was moved by a spirit and spirits. Now we know this is possible because when you read the scriptures, you find that that many uh, that the authors of the Bible, the scriptures declare that holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. In other words, the Bible that we have uh, is inspired of God. It is God breathed. It is. Uh, the word of the living God is this. It is, has come and has been given to us by inspiration of God. That is, just as God breathed into man, original man, the breath of life, he has inspired and breathed into his word, which makes it a living word. So friends, even as holy men spake and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, you also have unholy men and women that have written literature under the, as they were moved by unholy spirits, unclean spirits, occult spirits, witchcraft spirits, uh, demonic Luciferian uh, spirits, you see. And so, Madame Lebowski then wrote books under the influence of demon spirits. And one, one, she actually named one, she called it Kathumi, uh, who gave her things to write. And so she would write as she was moved by this unholy, ungodly, demonic spirit, power, principality, you see. And she wrote uh, several books. And so the belief system known as theosophy arose or emerged or uh, emanated from the writings of Madame Blavatsky. Now we understand Blavatsky was a Satanist. She was one who conjured demons. And so she got her information from the interdimensional realm, but not from the light side, not God, not the Holy Spirit, not the Spirit of Truth, but rather the dark side, you see, Satan, Lucifer, you see, uh, he who is the enemy of God. So naturally, because her philosophy, her, her belief system, which is known today as theosophy, uh, it, it, it teaches that Lucifer is God. And that the world today is headed toward what she called a universal Christ consciousness. A Christ consciousness. Now someone who is unlearned in the scriptures and someone who doesn't, uh, is not born again with the Holy Spirit of truth in them they would think that a universal Christ consciousness is a good thing. That which we know as the new age today, new age philosophy. You see, they're all interconnected. And so, Blavatsky taught that Lucifer is God and that the world is headed toward a new universal Christ consciousness. Now, when they say Christ consciousness, friends, they're not talking about he whom we know as Joshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. See, that word Christ means anointed one. That word Christ means chosen one, the one anointed of God. So they're saying that the Christ consciousness is it is not a person, but it is a universal uh, mind that the, the world that man is evolving into. And so, this teaches that he's evolving, evolving into this spiritual mindset. In fact, you will hear people say today, uh, you know, I'm a, I, I don't go to church, but I am a spiritual person. 
Uh, I, I don't, you know, serve God or believe in God, believe in Christ, but I am a spiritual person. Well, friend, understand that, yes, there are a number of spiritual persons out there. But the question is, what spirit? Witches are spiritual people. But they don't serve the same God that we do. And so, Blavatsky taught that Lucifer is God. She taught that Adonai, or, or the Lord, or that our God, she taught, as so many of these Luciferian doctrines do, that in the garden, that Yahweh, Yahuwah, that he was the enemy, and that Lucifer was the one trying to help man. And friends, you'll find this common thread runs through a number of demonic philosophies today, which is why you and I must fight hard for the faith. In other words, you all, they have this thing completely twisted that in the garden that Lucifer was the one looking out for man and that Yahweh was the enemy of man and, and hateful and trying to hurt man. In other words, y'all, they paint Yahweh as, 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 a, as a cruel, merciless God and Lucifer as the benevolent, as a benevolent God. Now, we know, of course, this is completely twisted and completely upside down, topsy-turvy, but friend, that's the world we live in today. And so, from the teachings of Blavatsky, theosophy emanated the, the, the philosophy that undergirds and underpins the meditation room located at, uh, in New York in a building that houses what's known as the United Nations. The United Nations literally has a publishing arm called Lucis Trust. Lucis Trust was founded by one of the disciples of Blavatsky. Remember again, Blavatsky was the, the progenitor or the, the one who started theosophy, which is a Luciferian doctrine that teaches that Lucifer is God. So Bailey was a disciple of Blavatsky. She came later, you see. And so she became a theosophist. And she, along with her husband, a gentleman by the name of Foster Bailey, founded what's called the Theosophical Society, along with Lucis Trust, which is today the publishing arm of the United Nations. Now, friends, someone may ask the question, what in the world does the United Nations have to do with this? Well, friends, understand this. Lucis Trust was founded back in 1921, 1922. And its original name was Lucifer Trust. And because of the backlash, because obviously the implications of the name Lucifer, they eventually changed the name to Lucis, L-U-C-I-S Trust. And friends, you can look it up. It is in existence to this day. Now you say, what in the world does that have to do with anything that we're speaking of here? Friends, it's important to understand that if the founding uh, philosophy of the United Nations is undergirded by theosophy and theosophy recognizes Lucifer as God, then friend, it's not hard to see the connection between the founding of the United Nations and the spirit behind it. In other words, friends, the United Nations itself is actually based upon the, the, the premise and the philosophy of so many who came before it and the founders of a one world. One world. One world united as one. A one world government but also a one world religion, 
a one world spiritual, okay, a, an interconnection. So when Blavatsky says that we are moving toward the Christ consciousness, what, what she's teaching and what Bailey teaches, who also taught by all her writing, in other words, she taught and, and, and wrote under the influence of demons. She, one in particular she calls Wall Cool. She literally wrote at least 19 books, possibly uh, 19 to 24 books, and under the influence, you see, of this demonic spirit. And somebody would say, well, why in the world would we want to be, to, to learn about a book that was written by someone of the occult? Well, friends, it, it's, it's good for us to understand what their philosophy is so that when we see that philosophy interwoven and gaining ascendancy in our society, we can recognize it immediately for what it is and we can reject it outright. You see. The time is going to come and the time is here where the deception is going to be so perversive, pervasive in the earth that if it were possible, even God's very elect could be deceived. And so Alice Bailey wrote uh, one book in particular called The Externalization of the Hierarchy. And in this she speaks of uh, what she calls spiritual ascendant masters. Ascendant masters. Now, what is an ascendant master? Friend, obviously the spiritual entities that, uh, that they look to for guidance. In other words, friends, they, they would, these were occultists now, and so they would, they would summon uh, these, these demonic uh, spirits, and they call them ascended masters. And remember, Satan is able to present himself as an angel of light. And so these ascended masters uh, can parade themselves as good spirits. But they manifest in the flesh, and, and the, that that book called The Externalization of the Hierarchy, she speaks of basically these ascended masters, these spirits manifesting themselves in the earth. Now friends, those that are familiar with Genesis 6 and the incursion of the watchers and then the Nephilim, the the watchers were able to come into this earth and cross that line, that interdimensional line and mix with humans to try to so damage and so alter DNA that the seed of the woman, Christ, would not be able to come. Friends, just as it was in the days of Noah, it shall be again. The scriptures declare in Ecclesiastes that that, that which has been will be again and there's nothing new under the sun. And so, these ascended masters, Bailey spoke of under the influence of this demon. And she said that, that these will manifest in the flesh to advocate for what she referred to as a new order, a new world order. In other words, friends, the way that the world is currently constructed, they say we need change. But the change of which they speak is an order that is desired by their master. And their master is, by their own admission, is whom we know today as Satan, the enemy, the adversary, the opponent of Yahweh. And so, in other words, friends, this new world order advocated for by those of, of Blavatsky and Bassan and Alice Bailey's ilk. These servers, she, she speaks of these ascended masters. Uh, another name for them is the new group of world servers, which is the physical manifestation of these. In other words, she called those that would be under the influence of these ascended masters, she called them the new group of world servers. The new group of world servers. Now, these world servers she's speaking of are none other, friends, than humans 
in high places who are under the influence of these ascended masters, which represents, again, the externalization of the hierarchy. The hierarchy being the, the way that Satan's kingdom is set up, the levels of authority that he set up, and he will be using humans to drive this philosophy, to drive this new order, you see, a new order that's paving the way for he whom we know from the scriptures as the anti-Messiah or the anti-Christ. These servers are, in reality, men and women who are demonically inspired, demonically influenced, demonically controlled to do Satan's bidding in his quest for the establishment of an anti-Christian, anti-Christ, godless, you see, Yeshua-less new order. And so, understanding this, friends, is important because the, 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 the emergence of this order inherently wants to stamp out and eradicate the faith of God. This philosophy, this, this, uh, 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 this belief system hates Yahweh, hates God, hates God's people hates the Bible. And that's why it, 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 it goes against everything that the Bible says is right and it advocates for everything that the Bible says is wrong. And so, what does that have to do with us today? Well, friends, it's important to understand that this new group of world servers, those who are connected with this new age philosophy, this theosophy, and, and when you break theosophy down, it's theo, which has to do with God. That's where we get our word theology from, you see. Theo having to do with God or some godlike entity. And then sophies or sophie comes from the same word sophistry, which has to do with, with teachings, reasonings, philosophy. So theosophy is a system of beliefs that that houses the demonic philosophy of Blavatsky, which teaches again, you all, that Lucifer is God, and that the world is headed toward a new universal Christ consciousness. Now, friends, it's important that you and I understand how pervasive this uh, philosophy and thought process truly is, because it is interwoven into the very philosophies of our school systems, in the very philosophies of uh, government. Uh, it, is, it is influencing the very thoughts and imaginations of men. And if you will remember, during the time of the flood, one of the things that the Father declared, Yah declared that he would destroy this world over was that, that men's, the thoughts of men's hearts was only evil continually. And so friends, we're seeing this. Uh, this theosophy will manifest itself in a universalism, uh, in a thought process that says that all religions are good, uh, that, that, that they're all uh, should come together to as one in a one world religion. But friends, again, this one world religion will leave out true Bible faith. Again, this is why you and I must fight hard for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Friends, we're seeing uh, as an example with the uh, this new group of world servers and the externalization of the hierarchy, we're seeing spiritual wickedness in high places. And so, uh, this this means that uh, even the the things that are happening with laws that are passed, we we see groups that are that are formed and funded by uh, a number of these 
world servers. And these philosophies are, are couched and housed in documents, in, in philosophies that turn into, into legislation, that come from even foundations that are, that are established to help to drive these philosophies, to, to, to fund uh, groups that help to bring these things to pass. Friends, this is how the connection uh, it is, 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 is bringing these things to pass. This is the connection. This is the liaison. This is where we're moving from the, the philosophy of an interdimensional realm manifesting itself in the natural realm. And friends, it manifests itself in philosophies that couch themselves in light but, but the core, at their core, they are actually darkness. Friends, these things are manifested in, in varied isms, such as uh, hedonism, pantheism, uh, uh, occultism, collectivism, things like secular humanism, you see. Situational ethics, values, clarification. See, these are some of the uh, uh, of the of the philosophies that have come forth that are even taught in our school systems and even taught uh, just in in society in general. Existist existentialism, uh, postmodernism. You see, Darwinism, globalism. You see. Uh, Collectivism, which which actually uh, the philosophies of government, you see that are that all that all emanate from this same source, and so it's important for us then, as believers, to recognize this, to understand it, and to know its origin. So I'll, I'll begin to wrap up by saying this. Jude declared that you and I are to fight hard, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. It's important that you and I understand that the very origin of theosophy, you see, uh, Lubotsky was, was uh, here in the 1800s, the late 1800s, so we're talking about the 19th century. But it's important that we understand that the true core philosophy of theosophy is ancient. It goes back six, five, six thousand years ago. In other words, friends, this originated with the uh, in ancient uh, Samaria, uh, Egypt, Babylon, uh, Acadia in uh, ancient towns and cities, ancient kingdoms, way back in the days of one Nimrod. In other words, friends, these are ancient Babylonian mysteries from, from thousands of years ago, manifesting themselves in the 21st century, couched under the, the rubric and the uh, the, the, the couch in the, the verb, verbalism of different isms, again, such as uh, pantheism, hedonism, uh, collectivism, Gnosticism. Uh, th these are philosophies that are based on ancient mystery religions that was started by Satan himself through Nimrod and that spanned through the, the generations of empires in power such as Assyria, such as Egypt, such as uh, Babylon and Persia and Greece and Rome. Friends, these same, these same doctrines, in fact the scripture says that the time would come when uh, men would would depart from the faith, giving heed to what the scriptures call seducing spirits 
and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In other words, y'all, teachings that come from demons. This is why it's so important. Again, many shall depart from the faith, friends. And so this is why it is so important for us to fight hard, to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. In fact, I want you to look at that quickly, and that's, then we'll end here. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Again, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. In no uncertain terms, the, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of God, the, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, He speaks expressly that in the latter times, and friends, make no mistake, we are in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. And what will they do? Giving heed, paying attention to, following after, you see, listening to, seducing spirits. Remember the externalization of the hierarchy, the ascended masters. These uh, Bailey and Babaski wrote under the influence of these demon spirits. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Remember the awesome one of them which says that Lucifer is God. And so, friends, this again is why it is vitally important that you and I obey what the admonishment of Jude when he says to us that we are to earnestly contend, fight hard for the faith, the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Because, friends, we are seeing today, as the scripture says, in the latter times, many are falling away. Apostasia, giving heed to these seducing spirits, new age spirits, new age philosophy, you see, theosophical uh, uh, thoughts, and you can see them interwoven into the very fabric of humanity today. And so I want to encourage you today, friends, Saturate your hearts in the word. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep your mind renewed in the word of God, friends. That way we will be able to recognize doctrines of demons when they manifest themselves. And it will protect us and our families from allowing these doctrines of demons, these seducing spirits to come in and cause us to depart from the faith. So we'll wrap up here. We'll pick up by the grace of God next time. But just remember this, friends. Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity tonight to get into your word. We look to you tonight. You are the spirit of truth. You are the one who leads and guides us into all truth. Thank you for revealing your secrets to us. And thank you for granting us keen, discerning of spirits so that we can recognize the doctrines of demons in whatever form they come and that we would roundly reject them and cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Thank you for the grace tonight to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for it. Amen. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may rest, remain, and abide with you, in you, and above you, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You are dismissed. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the evening.
or, or whatever time that you're looking at or watching or viewing this. Uh, may God bless you. We'll look forward to the next time we're able to delve into God's Word. Amen.